Father, we thank you, God, that your word never returns void. And Lord, we pray your blessing upon our time. Our ears, give us ears that we can hear what the Spirit says. More than that, God, help us to be a people that apply, live your word, Lord God. Hide your word in their hearts, not sinning against you, and apply it in their lives, Lord God. Help us to be not only hearers of the gospel, your word, but help us to be doers. Father, we thank you, God, for your love and your mercy, through your Holy Spirit, Lord God, can do all things. Bless and anoint our time, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Okay, so if you guys get your Bibles, and if you need one, it's in the pew. You want to just hear and follow along. I'm in John 15. I'll be reading from John 15. And the title of my talk today would be Stay Connected. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, Stay Connected. You know, um, I'm, I'm encouraged and I'm blessed as a young, uh, as I see the young people this morning. And like you've heard a few testimonies this morning about um, the seeds that been planted when you're young, that, you know, through the Bible study and through different experience in church that really played a part of who you are and your understanding of the Lord even today. For many of our uh, uh, older people here, we had some kind of encounter as we were growing up. So it's very essential, amen, that you have these peer-to-peer, uh, -peer, you have these Bible talks, and, and, and um, just to continue to press towards the mark of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. When, when you're at the young age, you're scratching your head and trying to figure it out, amen? Um, I too, at a young age, was thinking, man, are you real, Lord? And, and, and I would search. And as you search, his word says, ask, and it, it shall be answered. Knock, and the door shall be opened, right? And so continue to press towards the mark of the high calling. And in that process... You know, uh, I come to this sharing this morning of staying connected. Amen. From the chapter 15 of the book of John, it reads, I am the vine, I am the true vine, and my father, the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes that he may be bear more fruit. Already, you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches, Whoever abides in me, and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers. And the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and that it will be done for you. Okay, so I'm going to pause there for a second. So many of us know that the, um, in Scripture, the Lord would speak in riddles, parables, and in this case, he kind of, he's using uh, somewhat of a parable. And a parable is using a story or saying one thing that actually is also saying another thing. Amen. So as he uses the parable, he said, well, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Okay? Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. Can you help me this morning? What is he talking about? What is he talking about? Branches, who's the vine, and who's the fruit, and all that. Um, anyway, what is he talking about? Who's the, 
Who's the fruit? Okay, we we are a fruit, right? So if we look out the out there and we look and see the mango tree, I don't know about you, but I really like mangoes. It reminds me of uh, Adam and Eve in the garden. It reminds me of Adam and Eve as I looked at the mango. Yeah, it wasn't an apple that they ate from in the garden. See, you didn't know that. Some of you didn't know that. It was a mango. Because he said, man, go. Right? Okay, hope you use that one. I'm here every Sunday, about 10 o'clock. Come see me. But anyways, no. Again, it, it, you know, just to make it straight, it wasn't an apple nor a mango in Genesis when they booted. It was the, the tree of, of good and evil, the knowledge of good and evil. So in our Bible stories, we use the apple, and it kind of helps us to remember a few things, but it's, it's not specific fruit, just the, the, the knowledge of good and evil. Okay, but anyways, as you look at the tree, right, you look at the mango, you want some good fruit out of the mango tree, you, you know, whatever tree you look at, and, and the story kind of tells us about, we too should be good fruit in the Lord, amen, amen. right? Who wants to eat a sour mango, right? You bite into the mango. Rotten, right? What are you going to do with the rotten mango? Show them away, right? And that's what he said. If the fruit not good, or the thing rotten, or the branches not can bear fruit, boom, you break the branch and throw it into the fire. Amen. So the fruit or the vine um, on it is us. Amen. So he's describing that, okay, the, the father is the, the main key, the wine dresser. And, and, and he's the vine. And in the vine, we are all branches of the Lord. Amen. He said, I, I am the branch, and, 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 and in me, that we, we should bear good fruit, or we should fruit, bear fruit. So some of them that don't bear fruit, he said, um, he takes away every branch that does not bear fruit. Um, and he proves it, that, that the branch that Bear fruit, amen. I don't know if some of you are gardeners or want to be gardeners, but when you get one tree, sometimes you prune some stuff of the tree so then more fruit can come or different uh, part of the tree. So the Lord says he prunes some stuff so more fruit can, can come. So he said, Okay, the ones that don't bear fruit, boom, ah, throw that one away, no good. But the one that bear fruit, I will prune. And, and, and that pruning sometimes is the things that happens in our life that needs to uh, bring us closer to the Lord. A lot of stuff that happens in our life that God got to cut away. Even pruning is what? Cutting away. So some stuff in our life, we need to cut away so we can bear fruit better fruit, or we can be a better product for the Lord. Can you say amen? <laughs> oh, tough crowd. Okay. But I'm just saying that every one of us need to be pruned in the Lord so we can have some stuff that we can be closer to the Lord. Now, what going on with you is not necessarily going on with me. The struggles in you and the struggles in me. But the Lord is processing us. Amen. The Lord is processing the young, the middle aged, and the old. We're all in process. Amen. We're all learning until we see the Lord and takes us home. Amen. So you can teach me, I can teach you, and together we'll teach each other in the Lord. Amen. Amen. So um, again, verse 3 says, Already you're clean because of the word that was spoken unto, um, unto us, unto you. Abide in me, and, and abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear uh, fruit by itself. So here's a key thing for Christians, right? The uh, Christians have to be connected to Christ. Amen. <laughs> There's some fundamental things as a Christian that we ought to be doing, right? You ought to be praying. You ought to be reading the Word of God. You ought to be worshiping through songs and music. 
So there's basic things that we already ought to be doing. It's our lifestyle. It's our culture. The more we do it, amen, the more you do it, it's more natural, amen. It becomes second nature. For some of us, or for me, I wasn't always a Jesus freak, amen. There were what they call BC days. That means before Christ, right? When, you, when I grew up, I grew up in the Lord, and then something happens in this twisted years, and then when you, when you left home at 18, for some of us, it was letting a dog loose from a chain. If you, you ever seen a dog that was chained up for many years, and you let the dog go, what, did you ever see that? I just runs like crazy, like, I'm free, I'm free. But I didn't know how to handle freedom as like a dog that runs away and just do some crazy stuff, amen, to figure out that I was really good at my master's house. Things are well, it, you know. I, I had food, I had water, you know, I had shelter. And, and so, amen, uh, that happens to uh, many of us. But we come to the reality that, man, I gotta stay connected. If I'm not connected, you know, I, I run out there and I don't want the Lord, then, then I just, I, I found it, I feel there's darkness, there's emptiness, there's a void. And so the, the scripture tells us with, without staying connected to the Lord, there's death, amen? There's a void, there's an emptiness, and there's a darkness. And so we want to encourage one another, young and old, right? Because sometimes when you grow up, after you reach 18 and you're on your own, right? Mom and dad is not there to say, hey, you got to show up to church. Or you got to, right? You got to stay connected. Amen? Turn to your neighbor and say, you got to stay connected. The, the Bible says, the Bible says, grow in the grace and the knowledge of Jesus Christ. And if you're not connected, then how are you going to grow? Amen? Amen? How are you going to grow? Amen? When, when you eat, right, in order to grow, and some of us, we just grow, grow, and grow, but that, that's not a story. But I just say, when we eat, our physical man has to eat, but a spiritual man needs to eat. Amen? Amen. Our spiritual man needs to eat. And imagine, if you're not eating spiritually, amen, if you're not getting into the Word, if you're not getting, uh, uh, you know, not having uh, 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 the book of James for dessert, uh, the main dish today would be the book of John, amen. If you're not eating spiritually, then the spirit man dies, amen. The branch withers, amen. And, 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 and at a certain time, the, the enemy just puts it in overdrive. You know, when, when out of high school now, you're kind of independent and, and nobody to wag their finger or take you to church, right? I thank God that my parents took me to church, amen? Oh, keep quiet now. I thank God that my parents took me to church, you know? And I was one of the young people crawling on the ground, running away, right? Getting pulled in the ear. Gotta hold Elohim, gotta listen, amen? amen? But praise God, something happened when you're in the pew, young and old, there's something happened. The Holy Spirit comes and touches you, and God Himself lets you know that He is real and alive. Amen. God Himself lets Him know that you are a child, that you are heir of the kingdom. I never have to say it. The Spirit of the Lord, through His Word and through His might and through His love, just confirms who He is and who you is in Him. Just this morning, you just read it. It said it, right? Who, who you are. You are made in His likeness. Made in His image. You want to see God? Look in the mirror. Amen? <laughs> right? Didn't He say you made in His image? Right? But if you look around, you just see the beauty of creation and God is into everything. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And we're not going to 
We're not going to worship the creation. We are going to worship the creator. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We're not worshiping creation. We are blessed and we understand and we respect and we honor the creation of God. But we are going to worship the creator. Amen. Amen. It's so important to stay connected. Amen. It's so important because when you're not connected, the spirit man dies. And, and it tells us, if you abide in me, and I in you, without me, you cannot bear fruit. Amen? Amen. You cannot bear good fruit. You got to stay connected in, in, in him. Okay, as, as we read on, it says this. In verse 5, I am the vine, you are the branches, whoever abides in me, and I in him. It is he bear much fruit from a part. He cannot, he cannot do nothing. Aole, zero. If anyone does not abide in me, he's thrown away. Branch withered, thrown into the fire. But if you abide in me, see, this is the powerful one in verse seven. And uh, we love the number seven because it's God's number, yeah? Anyway, <laughs> okay. I'm not gonna go into that, but. Anyways, in verse 7, it says, If you abide in me, and I and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it shall be done unto you. Amen? How powerful is that? Amen? Amen? How powerful is that? And, and as you are in the Lord, amen, granting you the desires of your heart according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Amen? You know, the things of the Spirit. Okay, so I want you to remember this scripture in verse 7, right? So I'm going to sing you this scripture so you can remember. Some guys know this one, right? I'm, I'm singing. Verse 7. says in verse 8 by this my father is glorified 
that you bear much fruit. And so prove to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. Just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you that my joy may be in you, that your joy may be full. This commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you, greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for a friend. You are my friends. If you do not what I command you, no longer do I call you servants. For the servant does not know what the master is doing, but I have called you friends. For that I have heard from my father, I have not made known to you. You did not choose me, but I choose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit. And that you, your fruit should abide, so that whatever you ask my father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you, so that you will love one another. Amen. I know that's a lot of reading, and so I'm just going to sum it up in a little bit, and we're going to call it quits. As we think who Jesus is, not only our Lord and our Savior, yeah? And uh, I think it's a fun thing that sometimes when I think of the Trinity, or when I think about um, the one God and the three personalities and how it's described, one guy described it to me this way, and I kind of like it. It might be different from how people view it, but he described God the Father in a description, God the Son, Jesus, and God the Holy Spirit. But he described God the Father, and I kind of like this, as the hammer or the judge. Amen? If you read, there's many times that in the Old Testament, you see glimpse and glimmer of the, the forecoming king, right? In the Old Testament, you get glimpse and glimmer of who Jesus is coming. Okay, Jesus comes on the scene during the New Testament, right? But there's glimpse and glimmer of the prophecies of the forecoming king, which is the Messiah. But in the Old Testament, it's predominant by God the Father. Everybody kind of know him as God the Father. They don't know about the Son yet. They don't know about the Holy Spirit. But God the Father kind of rules at times with a hammer, right? Man, this happened. All these guys die. This guy sin in a camp. All these guys die. You go into battle like that. You hide something. Boom, you die too, right? So the, he's like the hammer of a judge. That and 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 he's judging um, truthfully and honestly. Not people like like people kind of deserve stuff, right? But something he knew that. That wasn't his ultimate goal. So when you look at God the Father, I think about God the Hammer. <laughs> but then, as we see glimpse and glimmer of the coming King, God the Messiah, Jesus comes along, and He's He's the in between. He's the Savior, right? He's the one that brings us back into righteousness with God. No need to kill the lamb anymore. No need to do all these rituals. No need to go through the priest. You can go direct connect. Amen. Lord, you there? Amen. I'm the answer. Amen? Direct connect. So we see Jesus, the Savior, the Messiah, right? And this is where we are now, right? John uh, 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, for whoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. But 17... As you look at 70s, he said, I didn't send my son into the world to condemn the world, but through my son that the world might be saved. Amen. Amen. The Messiah. So this is not the time of judgment. This is the time of salvation. Amen. Amen. And this is the message this young people are sharing and educating, right? And roaming, roaming into the hearts of other young people, right? Amen. That th this is not the time of judgment. This is the time of salvation. Come. Come into the master's table. Amen. So, you got the hammer. God the Father. 
Jesus, God the Son, the Messiah, the Savior, yeah, and God the Holy Spirit, the Helper, Amen, the Comforter, the one that strengthens and, and just makes things complete. When we cannot, the Spirit of God can. He makes all things possible through Him. He brings clarity. He brings strength when it's needed. Amen. When you cannot go no more, the God in you can, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit in you. Amen. Jesus said, I go so I can send you that this, this helper Amen. in you. And in, in, in all this, you have to stay connected. Amen. People said, oh, how can, how can God judge me this? How can I you know, get out of heaven strong? God would never leave me nor forsake me. And I said, amen, I agree. God will never leave you nor forsake you. But I find that people leave God. Amen. Amen. God, God is chasing people around even now. People that, because the heart of the Lord, right? The heart of the Lord is that none shall perish. But all come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Young, old, black, yellow, red, and green color. And no matter how big or small your pocketbook is. And no matter what culture, what language you speak, what ethnicity. The love of God is through all and for all. Amen? Amen. And that's our message of hope. That we want to see people in heaven. We want to see our brothers, our sisters Rejoicing in the Lord. Amen. Amen. And so be encouraged, young people, as you share this. Just think about it, yeah? If you was in heaven, or you, you know that's your ticket like that, wouldn't you want other people, your friends, your family, yes. yeah, to be there too? Amen? Thank you, Lord. And that should drive us of being who we are, called who we are. Amen. But it's not going to happen if we're not connected. Amen? Amen. We have to stay connected. Amen? Staying connected. Eating the word of God. Fellowshipping. Do not forsake the fellowship of the, the brethren. Bible studies. Praying together. You know. And, and this is something I said years ago. Or a couple years ago. The more Jesus in. The more Jesus out. Amen. The more Jesus you get in. True word. True um, hearing. True fellowship. The more Jesus come out of you. Amen. As a young person. Again, when I was making my transition from being a Christian and, and, and learning to be a new Christian, the older Christians used to tell me this. Hey, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You'd see them in town. And I'm like, I don't know that kind of language. It's foreign to me. It feels funny that you're saying praise the Lord to me and hallelujah. I don't know that language. So I would say, how's it going? But after I let the Lord, my tongue, my heart, my everything. I'm the guy saying, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, brother. How are you, brother? Praise the Lord. Amen. Because it's just a practice of what's in the heart. Amen. Sometimes you got to low me, low me that heart. That that heart be after the Lord. Amen. Amen. And you got to filter some of the junk. Amen. Because there's a lot of junk. Amen. From music, from language, from environment. You know, and, and sometimes you gotta go, oh Lord, help me. Filter the, the heart, that the heart is not getting dark. Amen. And and you kinda can know when you talk to people, you kind of know their sense of love for the Lord. Amen. And the Bible calls them discernment, but after a while, that you've been through some stuff and you know stuff. Because out of the heart, the mouth speak. Amen. So it's really, you really got to protect some of the things that come out of the mouth. Amen? Amen. I pray that coming out of the mouth be blessings, Amen. not curses. Amen? Amen? Blessing. You see something that the kind, don't be quick to bring the hammer. That's not your job. That's God the Father's job. No, no, no. Bring the blessing. Amen? Amen. You see the guy get the puka pants. Go tease him about the puka pants. Ah, get puka. No, no, hide him. Help him. Get puka on the nose. Help Excuse me. You know, help each other. Amen. Amen. In love and mercy. Amen. Because you want somebody to help and love you too that way, right? You don't want to do. You want to speak blessing. And my hope and prayer is 
The more blessing go out, the more blessing will come in. The more blessing go out, the blessings will come in. Amen? Amen. And, and no mind that you, we after the material wealth, our, our treasures we're storing up in heaven. Amen? So if I don't get them back now, amen, I'm piling up over there. <laughs> amen? Okay, uh, this one I'm going to put over there. Oh, I'm going to build one more story. And I'm going to be one more wing for, for me in heaven. One more blessing i put back into heaven. Amen? Pour out the blessings. Amen? Love. Be the extension of God's love in your community, in your family. Speak life. Speak blessings. Amen? Battle. Battle the enemy that want to speak other stuff in, in, in your mouth and in your mind. Battle. Ask the Lord help. Lord, help me speak blessing. Slow to speak. Uh, quick to listen. Amen. Slow to speak. Quick to listen. Amen. Okay. Wrap up. Let's stand. As we uh, close in prayer, I'm going to call a worship team. They say we have a song. And we're going to, after prayer, turn to your neighbor and say, I'm glad you made it today. <laughs> All right, that's great. Thank you, Lord. Father, we just thank you again for your love and for your mercy, God. We pray, help us to stay connected, Lord God. Help us to war off the enemy, Lord God. Lomi, lomi our hearts. Giving us a heart after you, God. Teach us, Lord God. Give us a new song in our heart, a new language of praise and worship and blessing, God. Help us to speak life, God. As we are connected to you, Father, that we know that if we abide in you and you in us, we shall ask what we will and it shall be done. And so, Lord, bless me, pray. Help us to love one another and bless, Lord God. Not judge, but love, God. Love people into the kingdom, Lord. Not judge them into the kingdom. Help us to find um, ways. Give us wisdom. Understanding the, the steps we take, Lord. It's not about just being religious, Lord God. But about a relationship, God. Help us to be real. People are looking for real in their lives. A hope, Lord God. Beyond measure, Lord God. And so we thank you, God, of this word, Lord, that encourages us to stay connected, Lord God. And, and Father, as we um, depart from one another, but never from your presence, we pray your blessings and your anointing, your will, Lord God, help your people be an extension of your love and community, Lord. We thank you, Lord, again for these young people. And we pray a blessing upon them, Lord God, upon this ministry, Lord God, upon Brother Matt, Lord God. We thank you, God, for his commitment, his love for you, Lord. I just pray, Lord, God, a hedge that, Father, you will continue to be, do dynamic things for the kingdom in this place of Hawaii, in Molokai, Lord God, in each island, Lord, in each school, Lord God. We thank you, God. We bless you, Lord. Again, Father, take us home safely as we depart from one another, but never from your presence. We say we love you, God. We love you, Lord. All these things we, we pray in your most precious name, Jesus. And all God's people say. Amen. 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 Give God a clap of